we will have the opportunity for some questions and comment in a moment. But first of all, um, we're going to invite a couple of responses from colleagues who are here with us. And first of all, Jeanette Harding, whom I introduced earlier. Well, I don't know. How, how do you follow that, really? Um, I was jotting things down as well. And um, just to say that some of the people that have helped with my recovery are actually sitting here tonight. I can see one, two, three, and several people um, that are here. Um, and I was one of the people who, who was sort of lucky enough to go over to Phoenix in April and um, look at the programme and be completely blown away by um, a lot of what I saw, actually. Um, but my response tonight um, is um, that, you know, I can actually remember when my recovery began because um, I'd, I'd actually worked in statutory services for... Um, quite a while and, and then got a mental health diagnosis and um, after sort of about 14 years of keeping my diagnosis hidden um, I, I was walking down a street in Cambridge and uh, passed a user run user led service called Lifecraft and it said in the window <laughs> they were advertising for um, a, um, a post of information worker and it had got um, under the sort of person spec it would help if you had a mental health problem. And I thought, well, this is a bit cranky. <laughs> All my <laughs> life I've been keeping it hidden. Yeah. <laughs> and suddenly they're saying that I can come out about it. So that was the beginning of my recovery, working at a place where, um, you know, I was working with, with peers. They gave me a job. Um, they paid me a decent amount. And, um, you know, my life started to sort of begin again, really. Um, so that, that was when my, my recovery um, began. But prior to that, I'd had several years of in and out of hospital, and I think Rachel's here, Rachel Perkins. I often refer to Rachel, the article that she did years ago mm. now, called The You'll Nevers, <laughs> and I had plenty of them. Um, I was told that I would never work again, I would always be in and out of hospital. My diagnosis meant that probably I shouldn't have children. It might not be a good thing. I wouldn't be able to cope. So, you know, you do internalise those messages and it takes a long time then to try and sort of turn that around. Um, so that, that was sort of my background, really. Um, what I can actually say now is that the I do a little bit of work for the um, local foundation trust, which is a mental health trust, and... Um, we have been sort of trying to deliver recovery training. I've certainly done an awful lot of it, but the difficulty was always embedding that in practice. People were saying the right things and nodding and nothing happened. Um, I suppose one of my concerns from the service user sort of a perspective um, is that I want, if, if this is actually sort of going to be rolled out, um, it has to be done properly. It has to be done not on a shoestring. It has to have proper supports in place. Um, my, my main sort of... I'm both sort of anxious and sort of excited at the same time. Um, but I can see concerns coming from the workforce, as, as um, Jean has talked about. Um, people will feel sort of threatened about their, about their job roles. Um, and I think that's why it's important that any of the trusts or, or organisations that roll out the peer support worker role, you know, put the right things in place to support people in that role <coughs> and to help bring the sort of existing workforce, you know, on board and along with, with them. That's going to be very important. Um, so that, I don't want to be setting people up to fail. I suppose that's what I'm saying. And because I've been in the psychiatric system, <coughs> my psychiatric career goes over about 35 years. Um, I've seen several sort of um, episodes or, you know, not, not just within the trust that I've done some work for, but where things haven't been thoroughly thought through for service users and, you know, problems have occurred and we're the first people to sort of um, to be got rid of, if you, if you know what I mean. Mm. So I think this, is a, this should be a very different experience um, for service users. I think I've actually said enough and um, perhaps if you wanted to ask any questions later but um, just to say thank you to, for Jean it's sort of um, re-energised me a bit hearing you again tonight that's fabulous Jeanette come yeah. and join us up here okay. 
Yeah, come and join us here. Because <laughs> I think you can help us answer some of the questions. Um, the next person to make a response is Steve Shrub uh, from the uh, Mental Health Network of the NHS Confederation. Steve, it says here a manager's perspective, which is always a rather dull sounding <laughs> thing, isn't it? But I think of you genuinely as a, a, not a manager. As a manager. <laughs> no, not much of a manager. No. no. <laughs> but as somebody who's passionate about this. So here's the comment from somebody who's worked in the system and managed it, but who's passionate about it. Yeah, okay. Um, a, a couple of thanks, really. Thanks to the Sainsbury Centre for continuing to challenge me. Let's hope they continue to challenge for a long time to come. And thanks to, to Jean uh, for challenging me. And uh, hopefully what I'm going to do in a few minutes is to challenge you and members of the network that I represent. Um, I wanted to just briefly reflect on where we are, at least in England. I'm not going to extend that to the UK, but at least in England. Um, and we're in an interesting place. Uh, the first time in a long, long time I've been wandering around Whitehall and the Department of Health and listening to civil servants and ministers talking about a new phase of mental health policy. And it has the word recovery running through it, uh, embedded in it. Now, I'll be honest, initially I thought this was just being fashionable, the latest sexy issue to put in, but I'm now beginning to wonder. So we've got a big opportunity. Uh, the New Horizons consultation is out. Um, it says some very powerful things about recovery. If you don't respond to that consultation, if you don't make a noise, then recovery will just remain one of a number of themes inside that policy. Many people say to me, well, what's the importance of policy? Well, policy sets the context and, as it did in America, began to open up a debate about, about recovery. Um, the second thing that's happening, which is really quite surprising, is that as I wander around NHS trusts and foundation trusts, I'm not just hearing clinical staff talk about recovery, but I have chief executives and chairs coming up to me and saying, I've just been to Arizona, or I've just come back from Arizona, um, and they're talking about recovery. So there's an interesting, an interesting set of things happening. Um, any chairs or chief execs here? Any board directors here? Um, if you aren't talking about recovery in your organisations, then you should. Talking doesn't mean things will change, but it's the beginning of that process. Um, as I wander around, though, I hear lots of people now telling me that they are part of recovery-orientated organisations. How many of you are part of recovery-orientated organisations? And don't bullshit. <laughs> when I ask them what that means, they tell me, well, we have service users on our interview panel for our chief executive. Okay, that's not a bad thing. They tell me that they do a lot to help people into employment. They tell me that they're into personalised care. They tell me into training. But they really do struggle to bring all that together into a model, a framework, which actually guides them as they try and navigate through some very difficult waters. And I think recovery gives us that. We've got lots of organisations that are edging towards recovery, but they're doing it in a very piecemeal way. So the challenge I think we have, and I think it is a challenge, is to move from a system that is beginning to toy with recovery to a system that actually makes it happen. And I just want to pick up the, the warning that we've just received. The worst thing we can do is to raise expectation without following through. Mm. And what I'm seeing a lot of organisations do is move into training, providing lots of training opportunities, but not turning that into real jobs. Mm. So I think the challenge to the system is the challenge to foundation trusts with the amazing potential of its membership structure, the challenge to the third sector with its amazing ability to influence NHS trusts and foundation trusts. The challenge is for us to commit to turning the concept of recovery into reality. And that is a really big challenge for us. Thank you, Steve. <laughs>